This is Barbara Kennedy. Welcome back to my FDN presentation part two, where I'll be sharing valuable information for you to learn about the other important FDN tests that reveal deeper levels of imbalances and dysfunctions that are going on in the client or the patient's body. This allows FDN practitioners to customize protocol or a program to neutralize or eliminate these health weaknesses or problems and thus strengthens the body's vital reserve. These particular tests include a specific intestinal permeability test, a specific pathogenic screening test, a self-test for yeast or candida albicans, and a thyroid test. So let's get going! As I'm sure most of us are aware, the health of the gastrointestinal tract plays a vitally important part in the health of the whole body. The intestinal permeability test gives us valuable insights into what's going on in the client's or patient's gastrointestinal tract. Here are some important facts about intestinal health. The intestinal mucosal barrier should not allow offensive particles into general circulation which protects the body from antigens, pathogens, immune complexes that are all destructive to the body. This mucosal barrier protects against infections and infestations by transporting a substance called secretory IgA. Secretory immunoglobulin. Say that three times fast. Or as it's commonly referred to as SIGA for obvious reasons. SIGA <laughs> is the most abundant immunoglobulin in the body and it is the body's first line of defense. SIGA becomes suppressed by elevated cortisol to DHEA ratio which is not good and it becomes elevated when there are acute conditions in the body like pathogens or it is also high when infections exist. Here is a list of common gastrointestinal diseases that are involved in SIGA deficiencies. Autoimmune achlorhydria, which is not enough stomach acid. Pernicious anemia. Infectious clostridium, which is a bacteria. Giardia lamblia, a parasite. Cryptosporidium parvum, a parasite. H. pylori, salmonella, parasites. Inflammatory celiac. Crohn's disease, ulcerated colitis, neoplastic lymphoma, and stomach adenocarcinoma. Malfunctions occur in the gastrointestinal tract over time from chronic exposure to antigenic, pathogenic, inflammatory particles, and microorganisms. This creates malnourishment and a compromised immunity system. Inflammatory conditions destroy important parts of the gastrointestinal system. These malfunctions are then responsible for conditions in the body like low enzymes of maltase, lactase, sucrose, dextrinase, lactose intolerance, reduced substances that mycelize or digest fats and oils, floating stools, and poor assimilation of fats and oils. Hyperpermeability or leaky gut correlate to the following illnesses, diseases, and symptoms. Fibromyalgia, sore joints, muscle aches and pains, MS or multiple sclerosis, RA, rheumatoid arthritis, other autoimmune conditions, migraine headaches, severe skin problems. So how does this happen? First, we need an understanding of what is an antigen. An antigen is any substance that causes your immune system to produce antibodies against it. An antigen may be a foreign substance from the environment, such as chemicals, bacteria, viruses, or pollen. An antigen may also be formed inside the body, as with bacterial toxins. Or tissue cells. What we call tight junctions in the intestinal tract loosen up 
with inflammatory particles and toxins. So the gut becomes permeable to antigens and toxins, which leak into general circulation and the lymph system. This creates an overall pro-inflammatory state and then disease can set in. Leaky gut or hyperpermeability is overlooked by the medical community. FDN practitioners are good assessors, clinicians, and health investigators who are interested in looking deeply into the body for healing opportunities for as long as it takes to get the client or the patient well. Getting information and data from this particular intestinal permeability test helps provide more clues to what's going on within that person's immune system. If there is dysbiosis or poor gastrointestinal health, it gives FDN practitioners an indication that the body's immune system is being compromised. This particular intestinal permeability test measures the ability of two non-metabolized sugar molecules called mannitol and lactulose to permeate the intestinal mucosa. In a healthy gut, small molecules like glucose and mannitol permeate or diffuse through the cells. So in this urine test, a healthy body should allow these molecules to permeate or diffuse. In contrast, lactulose is a bigger molecule and should not be absorbed through the cells or pass through the tight junctures between cells. This is a serious marker for mucosal barrier integrity between cells and there should not be much in the urine and thus the test results should be low in recovery of lactulose in a healthy body. Here's how this affects the immune system. The antigen or toxin load on the body and the antibody reactivity causes all the problems. Increased mannitol, which is a small molecule, reflects increased transcellular permeability, which may result in small antigens getting through the barrier walls of cells, triggering an immune response. Increased lactulose, which is the larger molecule, recovery has been associated with food allergies, inflammatory bowels, arthritis, and other inflammation. This is where FDN practitioners can begin looking for food sensitivities, parasites, fungi, bacteria, and other undesirable and unhealthy substances in the intestines. This intestinal permeability test indicates when large antigens are sneaking through the tight junctures, either too much or too little, indicating cell damage. It's also valuable in allowing us to look for healing opportunities because it can improve gut absorption and immune function, integrity of the tiny hair-like villi and microvilli, integrity of the tight junctures, quality of nutrient breakdown and transport through the villi, inflammation in the lamina propria, gut layers, dysfunction in the submucosa, more gut layers, peristalsis, the muscle layer activity, the neurotransmitter production and hormone production. Wow, that's a lot. Next, we have the GI pathogenic screening test. And this test identifies pathogens and infections. It can identify infestations of parasites like Giardia lamblia, bacteria like H. pylori and C. difficile, and fungi, which is commonly known as Candida albicans. The health of the gastrointestinal tract plays a vitally important part in the health of the whole body. Intestinal health is the prerequisite for body physiology. Digestion and absorption are fundamental to metabolic balance, since ultimately every physiological process depends upon proper digestion function and assimilation of food. 
and digestive malfunction can either be a basic cause or substantial contributor to a variety of disorders. Some disorders may seem to have little or no obvious correlation to intestinal physiology. In other words, the symptoms may appear far removed from actual cause. Intestinal microflora screening can identify parasitic and pathogenic involvement and blocking of proper gastrointestinal function. Additional insights from GI pathogen screening include overall assessments of the patient's or client's immune system and digestive function, and it can solidify the FDN practitioner's impression of what the client or patient needs to do to return to health to guide the individual in his or her healing process. FDN practitioners guide their clients or patients through the designed protocol that corrects their metabolic imbalances and helps rebuild and restore normal function, especially with the hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, elimination, and mucosal barrier systems. Working with thousands of people, FDN practitioners replace the dysfunction with good function, and the patient or client's health complaints disappear. The key is that the client or patient must follow the customized protocol to get results, and if the step-by-step -step process is followed, it is highly likely healing opportunities will be uncovered so the body gets healthier. As you can imagine, there are no guarantees of the results because the FDN practitioner has no control over the patient's or client's actions or bodily functions. But FDN has been around a long time. It's been tried and true and developed over time. However, there are reasonable expectations that if functions are improved and the hidden stressors are removed, the individual's health will improve. So FDN practitioners lay out a recommended plan or protocol with directions for the client or patient to follow. But obviously they cannot control what the individual does with the program. Pathogen testing. In biology, pathogens refer to anything that produce disease, which can include bacteria, parasites, fungus, viruses, Infections and infestations of pathogens are the most common sources of clinical and subclinical stressors of the body. This condition may go undetected for many years, even decades. Proliferation or spread of secondary overgrowth and infestations, as well as the waste these pathogens produce, generally occur, which keeps the body in a state of chronic stress, adrenal fatigue, maldigestion or poor digestion, and malabsorption or poor absorption of nutrients create malnourishment, poor nourishment, toxicity, and a need to detoxify and eliminate the pathogens. The longer a person remains in this kind of chronic stress, whether recognized or not, the more certain will they progress through the stages of disorder presented in part number one. Pathogens are significant blocking factors that limit results in any health program, and thus they must be identified which is the purpose of this specific pathogenic screening test. The value of stool testing identifies many causes for health concerns. It identifies the presence of microorganisms that are not normally present. It identifies the presence of microorganisms that are normally present, but usually in higher or lower concentrations. Either condition signals a loss of homeostasis, a loss of normal, healthy balance. A weak host or a person in a weakened condition can suffer severe consequences, including adverse changes in the gut pH and the inability to break down food properly, retaining other organisms that are normally rapidly expelled, 
disruption of the intestinal mucosal barrier and toxic conditions from the metabolic waste created by the invader or invaders. Let's go through stages of infection and we'll use candida a yeast for example. These morph from egg to larva to adults to cystic forms. Even if they are contained in the GI tract, they must be identified and eliminated. The parasites waste or poo are toxic, sometimes called biofilm, which is a very nice name for the poo. And this is a mucus with the parasitic waste. And this contributes to disease. The condition can migrate to tissues and organs distant from the GI tract. In the cyst stage, they can remain dormant within the tissues and are extremely difficult to detect. So I'm hoping you can see the importance of running both the intestinal permeability test and the pathogenic screening test. These identify the conditions going on in the GI tract and then help us develop a protocol or plan to help make the gut healthy and improve its overall functions. Next, we're going to move into talking about celiac disease, gluten reactions, and the celiac gluten testing, and the SIG-A immune system testing. Gluten could be a lifelong problem that manifests later in life, which creates the celiac disease symptoms. Celiac is not an allergy. Reactions to gliadin in celiacs are not an allergy, but rather an autoimmune process. Here's what occurs in celiac disorder or disease. Gluten is a protein found in many grains, including barley, rye, oats, and wheat. Gliadin is a part of gluten. Gliadin is the sensitivity of the celiac disease a genetic inability to digest gliadin properly, which results in a breakdown of gut functions into other serious health conditions. The body makes an enzyme, called TTG for short, to digest gliadin, but in celiacs, TTG reacts to gliadin to produce antibodies, anti-TTGA, which triggers inflammation of the gut. When the body attacks itself, it's called an autoimmune condition, resulting in atrophy or weakening and breaking down of the villi, brush borders, and crypts, which are important intestinal parts required for absorption and assimilation of nutrients. Therefore, the body has trouble processing, digesting, and absorbing nutrients from the food eaten which weakens the body and makes it susceptible to pathogens, infections, and infestations of parasites. After running thousands of gluten sensitivity tests, it has been observed that individuals with this sensitivity are predominantly Caucasian of British descent. If the test results show elevated gliadin IgA antibodies, there is a likelihood there is a gluten and dairy sensitivity. If the test results show elevated SIG-A, which is a strong immune reaction, then it is likely there is an infection present and we need to run labs or self-tests for candida. Through the work of FDN practitioners involved in testing thousands of individuals for gluten intolerances, here are some health conditions that can be associated with the celiac condition. Autism attention problems like ADD and ADHD, bipolar, depression, and addiction problems, onset of osteoporosis and osteopenia, persistent chronic inflammatory conditions, chronic fatigue syndrome, unexplained aches and pains, headaches, autoimmune conditions, diabetes 1, MS, or multiple sclerosis, RA or rheumatoid arthritis, skin conditions, and weakened mucosal barrier functions in the intestines. So if these conditions are present in an individual client, then as FDN practitioners, we highly suggest running the appropriate tests 
and recommending nutritional and natural substances and supplements to support the improvement of the health of the intestines. And now for some fascinating information about yeast, and specifically Candida albicans. An overgrowth of Candida albicans can stress and exhaust the body's adrenal glands and immune system, leading to hypersensitivity to foods and the environment, causing a wide range of symptoms. Here are some common symptoms of candidiasis. The inability to concentrate, poor memory, fatigue, weight gain, bloating, flatulence, constipation, diarrhea, sores, bumps, rashes, discharges, coated tongue, hormonal problems, vaginal infection, menstrual difficulties including PMS, depression, impotence, infertility, rectal itch, carbohydrate cravings, urinary tract infection and inflammation, allergies to foods and airborne chemicals. If any of these symptoms are present, we recommend a candida self-screening test. Then we can assess the results and recommend a repair protocol including the anti-candida diet. Next, I want to share with you some important information about the thyroid gland and hormones. The thyroid gland is the master primary gland controlling the body's metabolic rate. The thyroid gland is involved in all functions in the body including all of the body's billions of cells, like 70 billion, and making thyroid hormones, T4 and T3, regulating temperature, for example, a low T3 can create fatigue, temperature issues, even hair loss, wound healing, dry skin, depression, prone to infections, and slowing down the metabolic rate of the body's systems. Yes, the little thyroid gland in the throat area of the body does all this. Thyroid conditions are secondary to poor adrenal function. So the more adrenal function improves, the more the body is cleaned up, the better the thyroid functions. This is one of the reasons FDN practitioners start with improving the health of the adrenals. In summary, the health of the gut or the intestinal tract is of utmost importance in building or rebuilding good to optimal health. To gain insight into a person's GI health, the intestinal permeability and the pathogenic screening test are invaluable in being able to assess whether or not pathogens exist in the forms of parasites, bacteria, yeast. And as the function of the GI health is improved or returned to good health through very specific protocols, nutrients will be better absorbed and greater health will be experienced. FDN practitioners have helped many others with these types of health problems. I hope I have inspired and motivated you to want to know more about the inner workings and conditions going on in your body. Only then can you gain a clear assessment in order to design a customized plan for your unique health conditions and circumstances to allow you to begin correcting and improving the weaknesses, imbalances, and reasons for the frustrating, uncomfortable, and or distressful symptoms that you may be experiencing. This concludes part two of my introductory presentation about Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, or FDN, which presented the importance of two specific stool tests the intestinal permeability test and the pathogenic screening test that reveal important healing opportunities for improving gastrointestinal health. If you would like to proceed with the full FDN program, which includes all the tests I've covered in Part 1 and Part 2, as well as a wealth of health-building knowledge and wisdom about your health, call me at the number listed on your screen. I wish for you the opportunity to gift yourself the best and the finest vibrant health building experiences available. FDN certainly plays a great part in this. This is Barbara signing off for now. Bye-bye.